Ever pondered why economic crises seem to hit third world countries hardest? A question that might seem simple on the surface, yet it unravels complex layers of economic fundamentals, global politics, and socio-cultural dynamics. To understand this, let's embark on a journey through the economies of two distinct third world countries, Nigeria and Haiti, and witness how these nations grapple with economic turmoil. Picture Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, rich in oil reserves, yet struggling with severe economic instability. The root cause can be traced back to its over-reliance on oil exports. This monoproduct economy, heavily dependent on the global oil market, leaves Nigeria vulnerable to external shocks. When oil prices plummet, as they did in 2014 and 2020, Nigeria's economy sinks into recession. The country's failure to diversify its economy and reduce its dependence on oil has made it susceptible to economic crises. Output. Now, shift your gaze to Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Haiti's economic crisis is a tale of environmental disasters and political instability. The country is frequently hit by devastating hurricanes that wipe out agricultural production, the backbone of its economy. Coupled with political corruption and weak institutions, these natural disasters plunge Haiti into a cycle of economic crises from which it struggles to recover. Two countries, two different continents, yet the same story of economic crises. The common threads? Over-reliance on a single source of income, vulnerability to external shocks and weak institutional structures. In summary, while the factors leading to economic crises in third world countries can be multifaceted and complex, they often boil down to three key issues. First, over-dependence on one sector or product, like Nigeria's reliance on oil, leaves an economy vulnerable to global market fluctuations. Second, the impact of external shocks, such as natural disasters in Haiti, can devastate an already fragile economy. Lastly, weak institutions and political instability can exacerbate economic problems, making recovery a Herculean task. So, as we reflect on these economic crises, it becomes clear that the path to economic stability in third world countries involves diversification of income sources, building resilience to external shocks, and strengthening institutional structures. It's a daunting challenge, but one that must be met to break the cycle of economic crises and pave the way for sustainable development. And that, dear listeners, concludes our exploration of economic crises in third world countries. A tale of struggle, resilience and the relentless pursuit of economic stability. Until next time, keep pondering these economic conundrums and remember every crisis is an opportunity for change and growth.